everyone and welcome to this live today. I didn't announce it, it's sort of spontaneous. I, I was at the studio and I thought I'd just use this lovely space uh, to do a little sharing today. And of course I haven't done one of these for a little while, so it's about time. Um, so uh, right now for me things are all about nourishment is something that I'm exploring, especially in preparation to to a retreat I'm running in a couple of uh, weeks here in Portugal. Um, and those of you who, who do some yoga with me know how slow and gentle, um, but also really deep uh, the way our practice is. And I, I feel like it's really coming from, from that, this giving time to the practice that to me feels so nourishing. <laughs> and this morning I got on my mat and I didn't actually have that much time to do my practice. Uh, I had like about 20 minutes or so. Plus I also felt like I wanted to move a little bit. Um, I kind of felt like I needed to wake up a little bit and vitalize. And I was exploring uh, a, well, I mean, there's nothing really fast about that practice ever, but I guess I was just exploring not spending so much time and really settling and going in into this quietness, into these still points, but kind of just, you know, doing a, a whole bunch of different poses that I all feel like they are nourishing when I do them otherwise. Um, but just not spending quite as much time on them and to see how that might be nourishing. Um, so I, I loved it. I felt really vitalized and awake afterwards. So kind of ticked all the boxes for me and I thought I'll just, uh, I'll just share that um, around about 20 minute practice. So you'll notice we'll not be, be hanging out so much in, in each place. Um, I don't know, maybe you enjoy it. It's like a, well, I called it a nourishment quickie. <laughs> um, but you know, like that's kind of day-to-day -day life, right? We don't really always have so much time to get on the mat and to make time for ourselves and for self-care. And um, if we can only make 10, 15, 20 minutes a day, then that's what it, that's what it is. And we kind of want to make the most of that. So yeah, I don't know. I, I'm just going to get on the mat. And if you want to join me, join me, or this video will stay here. So um, replay it anytime you want to want to have a have a practice. So as always, I will start like down though, um, and I'll have a little roll around first. Oh, so this is really freestyle, any which way you want to roll around and. Oh, get in touch with the with the ground. Maybe you want to have a little stretch or a twist or a yawn or a couple of deep breaths, something like that. <sighs> Go ahead. And then eventually I'll come and settle in my undoing pose. And today I was practicing with my arms over my head behind me. That felt a little bit more sort of waking me up kind of feeling here. Oh, I'm going to spend uh, a few moments here just arriving, letting the body settle, giving the body to the, to the ground. So the principles of the practice all remain the same. The idea is the really tuning into your own body and listening to the body. All of this stays the same, it's just that we, you know, actually, once we, we are really tuned into that, we can access it maybe a little bit more quickly um, and don't need to spend quite so much time as, as we would normally do in, in my classes. It's really about finding the way into these principles, but actually if they are already a little bit more embodied, might actually be able to tap into those resources that we already have. <sighs> and then uh, we turn the head a little bit here from side to side, just rolling it around. 
bringing a little bit of movement into the body very gently. So I won't be explaining all of the moves in that much detail to begin with. A very simple move, but yet if you have never done it, you might find it somehow tricky to translate. I'm just sending my knees away from my face, forwards, kind of, sort of forwards and up in a way. And that makes my sacrum lighter, it sort of tilts the pelvis and lets the lower back drop into the ground. And then I release that. And I do that a few times here, moving the knees forwards and away and releasing. So I'm kind of creating pelvic tilts with that, but the movement is coming from the knees. And then when I come back with the knees, I draw the knees more towards the face without lifting the feet off the floor. I'm just drawing the knees towards the face and that draws the pelvis the other direction, taking me into a lumbar arch. And then pushing the knees forwards and away from the face, tilting the pelvis. And let's do that two or three rounds. Tilting and rocking the pelvis, but the movement is initiated from the knees pushing forwards away from the face and drawing up towards the face. And then let's let that settle and whatever might feel neutral. And let's drop the shoulders down into the ground, floating the arms up, arms are nice and loose. And this is one of my favorite uh, moves, crossing the arms over, just a very gentle hug here, hands on the opposite upper arm, and then keeping the pelvis very anchored and as steady as possible, rolling the shoulder girdle from side to side. So just lift one shoulder up and then turning the opposite direction but at the same time really trying to keep the pelvis steady and not moving at all. So for me that requires quite a bit of concentration, having to sort of counterbalance that a little bit. <sighs> Isolating this rotation in the upper back as best as we can. A couple more from side to side. <sighs> And then coming back to the center, release the arms down to the side of the body somewhere, just taking a moment here, taking a deep breath. And then I love doing a twist, so let's push down through one foot and let that side of the pelvis come up and twisting the opposite direction, just letting the body unfold here. The trick is to keep that foot that's working flat on the ground and so the pressure goes vertically down into the ground. And then coming back, drawing that back into the center, going over to the other side. It feels, you know, it's a gentle twist, but it also feels a little bit stretchy, a little bit opening in a way. And uh, let's go a couple of rounds each side. So this morning that felt really, really nice, like a nice kind of waking the body move, going from left to right here, a couple of rounds. Coming back to the center. Let's let the knees fall into the chest, cross the ankles over, one hand on each knee. And let's have a good rock here from side to side. Nice little massage for the back body on the floor. And then from this rocking, I always let the body decide which way it might want to roll. So let's roll onto the comfortable side of the body and stay there for two, three breaths. <sighs> Just rolling. Rolling always feels nice. And then we can use our hands to slowly push ourselves up to come to sitting. And 
Uh, feel free to sit any which way you might like on uh, cushions or you might want to kneel or sit on a chair. It's all good. Uh, nice little wiggle here to arrive in the vertical axis, a little shimmy. Uh, freeing up, letting some of that holding fall away. And some raspberries. And so I did this morning as a little face massage here. So you know, as I was doing my quick practice, it's just thinking of all the things that just feel really caring and loving and nourishing. And so I'm just massaging here around the jaws and along the jawline. And then coming up along the ridges of the nose and up and down a couple of times here. And across the forehead, out to the sides. And the temples also feels nice. And one of my favorite things, let's pull on the ears. So I'm just taking the earlobes and gently pulling down towards the ground with the mouth slightly open, releasing the jaw. And then from behind, pulling to the wall behind. And then from above, pulling towards the ceiling. And then a little neck massage, hand around the back of the neck, turn the head away first, and then pulling forwards with the head turning into the pull. Hmm. Ringing out the neck muscles here. And the other side. And then across the collarbone here at the front also a couple of times. And then squeezing along the arms. You can also just do one arm at a time. Huh? Oh, all the way along. And shaking it out. And then let's change the cross of the legs. I'm just going to turn the other way. And then just rocking back over the sit bones, making a nice round back here, fingertips in front to rest the weight of the shoulder girdles into the fingertips. Finding a little bit of a quiet moment here. And then just exploring. So I didn't really do anything technical here at all this morning. So explore for yourself if you want to come down onto your forearms or stay on the hands. Whatever might feel good here as a little forward fold and checking in how are the hips doing today? What might do they what might they need right now? And take a couple of breaths here. And slowly walking the torso back up and taking the fingertips out to the sides. Uh, 
Let's work a little bit with the breath and wake that up. Inhale, floating one arm up and then exhale, just very gently leaning over to the side. Not into a massive stretch, but rather just going into a little bit of a lateral movement through the spine, letting the shoulder girdle drop into gravity. Inhaling and exhale. Find your own rhythm with that. Following the rhythm of your own breath. Next one, let's not go quite so far. Just floating one arm up and then the bottom hand comes around. And we'll do some patting here, really waking up the diaphragm, freeing up a little bit around the intercostals. Waking up the breath a bit, deeper breathing. And then that patting hand can come to the floor. One more deep breath in. With the exhale, gently lengthening and opening a little bit more through that open side of the body here. Inhale, coming up. Let's change over to the other side. And coming round. Slightly bigger breath there. Releasing the hand to the ground, deep inhale. And exhale, nice and long but gentle. Inhaling to come up. Release and something to wake up the breath a little bit. Inhaling to open. And exhale, just gently turn the back arm drops down, front arm just wraps around the front of the body. Inhaling and exhaling. And for this one, Let's speed things up a little bit. We're only doing a few rounds of this. So we're not going to hyperventilate, really. We're just waking up the breath. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. A couple more. Inhale once more. And release. Good. Taking a quiet breath here. And let's take the legs around to the sides and come up onto all fours. And then let's place the elbows down where the hands are. Relaxed hands, relaxing the neck. I'll just very gently move forwards and back here. Very gentle movement. So this morning I was feeling a little bit stuck and stiff between the shoulders. That's really where I wanted to, to create a bit of movement and sensation and wake up. Uh, so I did a couple of couple of, sort of stretchy opening things. <laughs> it's a little bit unlikely for me, but so here it's a very gentle way to ease oh, back and that just feels lovely in the shoulders. You don't have to go all the way back to the heels, but just exploring that and then going forwards and maybe even going a little bit further forward. So there's a bit of an activation and waking the muscles and that's do that a couple more rounds. And then coming up. Uh, let's come onto all fours. So the thighs are about 90 degrees or thereabouts. And then walk the hands forwards. I'm not going way to limit. I'm actually stepping a bit back from the limit. So I'm really supporting myself back up into the shoulders. And they are quite quite buoyant here. There's movement, which means I can breathe. And then I'm working really quite deeply with the breath here. Inhaling wide into the ribs. Really sort of chesty, puffy breathing and flaring the ribs out. 
And then on the exhale, this is emptying out and allowing the spine to just drop and settle into the rib cage. Maybe the head will come to rest on the floor, maybe not, that's all good. One more breath. And then slowly we can push down through the hands and walk back. And let's come into a really round cat arching through the back, letting the head drop, the tail drop. <sighs> and maybe very gentle movement with the head, really letting it, letting it dangle. And then let's take the knees a little bit wider, just a fraction, and move a little bit side to side as we're dropping back towards the heels. And then coming to settle into a comfortable version of child pose. So feel free to find the right level for support for your head, maybe on the floor, maybe on your hands, or you can grab a block to place it under the head as you wish. And I'm just going to stay two, three or four breaths here in child pose. Hmm. Let's press down through the shins and the knees to come up. Something to me that's always really important is to wake up the feet, to work on the feet. So I'm just tucking the toes under and settling my weight back to open the feet a little bit here. And then also you can curl the toes the other way and come onto the knuckles of the toes if that's not too painful. So you can play with that. And as another option, of course, is also pointing the feet away and sitting all the way back from time to time. So just a little playful waking up with the toes if you wanted to, of course. You tuck the toes and sit back on them for a moment. Hmm. And then pushing ourselves back onto the haunches and just turning around. You can do that with our hands on the floor. You could do it with uh, your elbows resting here. Coming to a flat foot and then the other side. So it's just a nice way to wake up those feet, let them work a little bit. <sighs> Great. And then from here, let's come into a forward fold. <sighs> You have your feet as wide as you like. Find fingertips on the floor or hands on the ankles or forearms on the thighs so you find a place where you get some support for the weight of your torso. Now we can take a couple of deep breaths here and something to play with is really engaging through the feet, pressing down through the mounds of the big toes, out through the little toes, allowing the heels to drop really activating from the feet up through the legs to the hips oh, and through the spine. And then let's step one foot in front and then the other knee comes down to the side of the foot. Ish. I'm just going to turn that a little bit so there's a space between the two. I call it like the, the runner stance. I don't run those. <laughs> Not be anything like being in the starting blocks uh, for a 100 meter run, but it reminds me of that anyway. So uh, let's rest the chest here into the leg. And if that doesn't quite proportionately work out, you can also place a cushion here, just really finding some touch here and a way to, to rest the torso into the leg. That just feels, feels nice, it feels very restful. 
And then we're going to stand into that front foot, oh, giving the weight down through that front foot and coming into this forward fold. But that front knee stays bent, so I don't lose the contact here, chest to the thigh, still just resting. And then coming down. A couple more rounds of that. Really letting the head and neck hang. The shoulders, arms are really soft. <sighs> Resting on that front thigh. Back leg may or may not straighten. <sighs> and let's change that over at the side. <sighs> Resting the chest on the, the shoulder, on the knee. Standing into that front foot. <sighs> Let's do three rounds on this side too. And then I'm going to do a couple more with the hands a little bit more consciously out in front, almost like you wanted to come into a downward facing dog. And so standing into that leg and down. And then just placing that front foot back, both toes tucked, and we come up in the same way, which takes us into a sort of downward facing dog. Coming down, other foot in front, hands don't really move. Coming up, and down, both feet back, down dog. Don't worry about straightening the legs or anything, it's just about that nice lightness through the hands here, the restfulness. The legs are working. <sighs> Couple more. In fact, next time you come up into the down dog version from here, feel free to just walk that a little bit more into a dog distance if that feels better for you. I'm going to stay for a couple of breaths. And then Slowly bending the knees, releasing the toes, and let's settle back into child pose for a couple more breaths. Come press down through the shins and the knees to slowly come up. And now we just sit back kneeling for a moment or cross leg or whatever is comfortable. A little check in. How does that feel? And then actually let's come to just really find a comfortable seated position for a moment. So I'm just Propping myself up here on a couple of cushions. Just for maybe one minute sitting. Coming into our own access. Letting the practice resonate. Letting the body integrate. In stillness.
let's take a deep breath in with the arms coming out to the sides and up and exhale palms down coming down through the middle towards the earth twice more last one and on the way down let's place the hands on top of each other and then onto the lower belly to our hara open the eyes and move around a little bit so something like this was my practice this morning not sure if I remembered all of it but uh, and I also don't have a, an eye on the how long it took just now but I, I think this morning I spent about 20 minutes so yeah especially those of you who do know uh, kind of my kind of practice and my approach I would love to hear from you to get some feedback how did that feel to go through these poses that we do do normally in, in classes, in class, um, but to do them with a little bit less time and just moving through them in this way and breathing and waking up. So for me this morning, I felt really energized, really vitalized. I had really productive a uh, few hours this morning work-wise, just got lots of things done with a really nice clear head and my body was feeling good. So. Um, for me, it worked, so I was <laughs> I was happy enough with it. Um, but yeah, I would love to would love to hear from you what, what you think. Uh, does it work as a quickie, <laughs> um, or do we need to take more time? I don't know. I'm just putting it out there. You know me. I'm not really one for it. Has to be this way, or it has to be this way. It really just is such an individual thing. Our yoga practice. So. Anyway, comment below, um, let me know what that felt like for you. Um, thank you so much for joining me and for having a go at this practice. And I'll see you. I'll see you soon. Have a beautiful week. Thank you. I'm going to have to get up and <laughs> turn this off. <laughs>